Welcome back everybody to another episode of Nasty Addiction Garage. So today what we're going to be doing, we're switching things up a little bit and moving from the front end to some carbon fiber stuff. I don't know if you guys remember back uh, maybe ugh, a lot of episodes ago, uh, I did get in some uh, carbon fiber doors from Ying. Uh, he had a group buy, I did buy some. Uh, I did get them in. I don't know if I did a really good video of them, but I did do uh, a video of them getting installed and in the process of it getting installed, the window busted. So that was the driver's side door. And now what we're gonna be doing is actually finishing this project and actually doing the left side. So we're gonna try the passenger side. Uh, we're gonna get the Dremel ready and let's go, guys. All right, folks, welcome to today's episode. So like I was saying, we're gonna focus more on the carbon fiber doors today just because we're waiting actually on uh, quite a few different things. I'm waiting for some M8 bolts, uh, titanium bolts, of course, uh, for the engine bay, I still am missing the... Uh, I'm going to change up the battery tray. I'm going to actually get a its own kind of like mechanism to keep the battery tied down. I did order the horns. I ordered uh, the inner tie rods. Um, I ordered... Uh, what else? The, the, the plastic uh, bellow, I guess you call it, uh, for the inner tie rods. Um, what else? What else did I order? Uh, oh, yeah, I ordered the uh, titanium bolt. I want to install the lower control arm already uh, and I want it to be titanium so I had to settle for a silver titanium bolt but uh, I I'm think I'm gonna burn it just so then it can give it some color I did get a black titanium washer so uh, it'll be like burnt titanium with a black washer so I think it'll look okay it'll look better than the silver so we still got a long way to go for this front end just because uh, there's still a lot of things I still got to do and I still got to get this radiator uh, um, welded on these these uh, AN fittings so I eventually gonna do that but at, you know that's at the lower level of <laughs> my priorities right now for this front end I just want to make sure that everything comes out nice and put together and to spec the way it's supposed to uh, the next thing I want to do though is um, kind of mount up the headlights and actually like drill and do all the stuff that I need to do to permanently fit them uh, but we'll move on to that when everything comes in uh, but moving back to the carbon fiber doors guys so let's let me show you the door that I did complete um, this is the door uh, I ordered from Ying um, I don't know if it's Malaysia he might be in Malaysia I, I, I'm not too sure I, I totally forgot uh, he does make some really good stuff uh, but if you guys remember in the episode of me putting these on and and kind of cutting everything and kind of putting all the screws where they need to be um, my driver's side window exploded uh, here goes some evidence here um, that was not fun and it was scary <laughs> like I was trying to install it and it just exploded and I think I just cranked it too much as far as the pressure goes on the window just because these windows and these rails are built very weird but we all know how that works um, I put too much pressure and the window exploded but it's gonna take a little bit of work uh, just because remember the door is not as pliable as uh, what a stock door or metal door would be it, it sounds stupid but it, it believe me you'll you'll understand what I'm saying if you had the door in front of you but uh, this is this one guys so let's go look at the other one that we are going to start so this is it right here so what I got to do uh, is switch everything from here to here so that's gonna be the plan that's gonna be the uh, the schedule for today so it's gonna take some fine-tuning as you guys can see not everything is perfect um, there are some imperfections on this door um, I'm not uh, saying it's a hundred percent perfect and I'm not saying it's garbage but guys let's get into this and uh let's let's start this project because this is going to be a lot look at look at all this stuff so let's just go all right guys i took the uh the door cup uh i guess metal bezel um off but i forgot i did put this foam on here which was the most probably dumbest idea uh putting it on the doors because now i got to remove these clips and it looks like it's going to be a little challenging uh, to do without breaking them uh, so I did get uh, some stuff here so I think I'm gonna try this one this might work yeah so this one might work um, I'm thinking of just kind of using them to kind of pry out a little bit so it looks like it it might just work so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and and do this I'm gonna put you guys on the uh, 
on the camera stand just so then I can try to remove these and, and get this done guys so let's go As you guys seen these things popped up pretty easily um, they do go right here but I do have a problem uh, I'll show you guys right now what I'm talking about about the door having its imperfections which isn't which isn't bad, but um, kind of, look at this. So this is supposed to go here, and this is how it fits. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna have to take out the Dremel, and I'm going to have to uh, cut it, you know, or cut into this and kind of make it more of a square, just enough to fit this piece. So uh, I'm gonna have to do that to these both. So let's try this, and hopefully I don't overdo it. Uh, I do have a Dremel here with uh, this piece here whatever whatever this piece is used for I got it from Home Depot uh, but let's go uh, let's go ham on those uh, two holes there and uh, try to get this done guys so let's go Alright guys, so you guys seen what I did, I, I had to Dremel them, so these things are very, very tightly put in there, so um, what's going in here are screws, so hopefully that these screws will fit without cracking any of the carbon fiber or the clear coat, um, just because of how snug they are, but it looks like, I mean, it, it looks like it, it should fit fine, they're not too, too stressed in there so I think it'll work we're gonna go ahead and try it out and and put these things back on so I think it just butts up like let me see hold on I think it just butts up something like this so we're gonna go forward and do that guys so let's go Alright everybody, so you see and I dismantled the majority of what's going on here. Um, I did remove uh, the two bolts here, this one down here and this one down here. This one here is to uh, release the actual side mirror. I did do this side, this side's already removed, but what I'm going to do before I start removing too much, uh, I'm going to start installing this uh, on the carbon fiber door here. So as you see, we do have holes here uh, for these two, which doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna fit the last one did not fit that well so we're gonna try to Dremel these out if we need to and obviously this hole is not gonna fit this so we're gonna have to Dremel this out uh, and go forward with that guys so uh, let's get to that and let's go all right everybody so you guys kind of seen what I'm having an issue with here these fit perfect and lined up uh, after I kind of dremeled them out from underneath, it looked like the layer of resin uh, that was underneath this um, was too thick, so it wasn't allowing it to uh, actually sit well. So I did dremel them out. It worked pretty well because, as you guys can see, it sits good enough to uh, to put quite a few different, uh, quite a few threads in uh, the nut. So this is the one that I'm having the issue with right down here. As you can tell, there's not enough. Uh, to thread any bolt on there so I'm gonna have to get back here and, and sand some more of this with the Dremel and uh, try to get uh, this on a, on a better set uh, level but I see this this kind of bezel here that might not allow it to get any higher but we'll give it a shot to see what we can do so let's go As you guys see, I'm still having this issue. There's just not enough thread um, to uh, thread this through here. So what I think I'm gonna do, or at least not enough thread to thread this um, 
nut, I guess. So what I'm going to do is, uh, it might be a little ghetto, but I'm going to try one of the titanium uh, M8s that I got here. Um, let's see if one of these guys might fit. Just because the uh, the thread starts, like the threading starts earlier than that other one. So let's see if this works. I'm hoping that it does. Let's see, let's see. And if it does, I think I'll just buy a whole bunch of M8 nuts and start changing things out. So I'm gonna put you guys back on the camera stand and uh, let's see if this works. Let's go. Folks, as I suspected, that M8 titanium bolt worked perfectly fine here on this bottom bolt for this window, uh, I guess, rail. Um, but it did thread through at least half of this nut, so I'm okay with that. This, These two fit perfectly fine. So as you guys can see, I could lift up the whole thing with this without any cracking or, or creaking or anything like that. So I'm pretty excited about that. All right, moving on to the metal door. What we're gonna start doing is removing this window regulator. As you guys can see, I got the majority of the window out. Um, I do wanna remove this little triangle here. This triangle here is for the side mirrors. I wanna get this out of the way so then we can move the rest of this stuff up and out uh, and slowly start transitioning things over, guys. So let's jump into it and let's go. Took out the other portion of, uh, I guess, the window bracket that's gonna sit right along here, I believe it sits here, and it comes up through here. It has um, two, I believe, I don't know, they look like M8, or maybe M, yeah, M8 bolts or nuts uh, that go here. Um, there is a uh, piece that goes here as well. There's gonna be a bolt that goes through here, but I'm gonna have to, like, cut through that because that's not going to be big enough that's for sure uh same thing goes for one of these holes down here because we need to fit this and obviously the diameter on this is different from the diameter on this so guys let's jump into uh, uh cutting through this carbon fiber and setting this all up uh, i'm going to put you on a time lapse just because it's going to take me a little bit longer and i'll switch back and forth um but it's going to take me a little bit longer and i want to make sure that i get this done right and i don't uh want the uh the my cameraing to to mess up my job here so uh, i want to make sure i get this done right so i'm going to put you guys on a time lapse so let's go All right, guys, so I did Dremel out the uh, top portion of this um, just so that it can fit so I can actually swivel it if I need to. Um, but as I go down, as we see that this sits right here, um, right here, as you guys can see, the fitment is not all that great. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out around this, this opening. So I'm just going to make it a little larger. Um, it is a uh, nut with like a, a washer below it, so even if I make the, the hole a little bit larger, it should still fit and, you know, sit snug once I tighten it up. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that so uh, we can get this part back on and move on to uh, removing some more stuff over there and uh, putting it back on here, guys. So let's go. So as you guys seen, um, this actually now fits pretty well. Um, I'm gonna line it up here. Let's see, there it goes, and right at the bottom down here, it actually fits really well, just like that. Um, I had to use a titanium nut uh, for it to fit down at the bottom, which I, I mean, I was expecting to, uh, just like on the other side, um, just because the the resin on the back of this is pretty thick, so I had to shave some down. So this works, but. Moving forward, there's there's a bolt that goes right through here, which is this bolt here. And as you guys seen, like this, there's no way that this bolt, the diameter of this bolt is gonna fit into here. As you guys can see, like I'm gonna I'll show you guys real quick. Like I, I have it in there because I already kind of shaved around it, but this is not this is not gonna go. This is not going at all. And what's happening at this point is that <clears throat> it's stripping the the actual like I guess rivnut that's in there I guess I don't know but what I'm gonna do is make it simple I'm going to uh, go ahead and chop it up and cut all through this and put a M6 rivnut in there and just use an M6 bolt to tap that down so let's go ahead and move forward doing that guys and let's go 
All right, guys, I did get that rib nut in there, um, so it's nicely tucked in there. So then what I'm gonna be using now is gonna be an M6 bolt instead of this bolt here. And what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do that to this side as well at some point. As you see, I did not put the bolt in there because I was gonna eventually do that anyway. Um, so that's gonna be the plan. Look at who we have here. We have Littlefoot. Littlefoot is my uh, Salcata tortoise, if you guys aren't aware. Um, she has been with me since she was maybe the size of a quarter. Um, her name is Littlefoot, and I am thinking she's a female. I'm not, uh, I haven't had her confirmed or anything like that, but this is my little buddy. Um, this one used to hang out with my Sharpay, Chloe, inside the garage as well. Um, but Chloe has passed away, so uh, we have Littlefoot here hanging out with us today. Um, I let her roam around in the backyard while I do some work on the MR2. Alright guys, so what we're going to do now is then we're going to start uh, putting this together right here. So like I said before, it does fit perfectly fine there and it fits perfectly fine right down here. So now what we're going to do is just tie it all up like it's supposed to. We're going to use an M6 bolt instead of that bolt there. We're going to use the titanium nut for down here because that's what fits. We're going to use these two um, to securely hold that down uh, in the meantime. So guys, let's get to it right now. Guys, as you guys seen, I got these all nicely tucked in and on. These things are pretty secure. I can lift it literally by uh, the window rail and it's it's holding on. So, so far so good. I like the way it's coming out. So we're gonna move on here now and try to remove the rest of this uh, window regulator uh, along with this window up top. As you guys can see, it's pretty loose. So I'm gonna continue pushing it up uh, to see how far I could bring it out. And um, hopefully I can take it out completely uh, and get the window regulator on there. I'm not gonna put the window in just yet because I got a plan. Uh, you guys gotta stay tuned for that because the window is gonna be a little different. Um, I, I'm still kind of debating on what I wanna do, but it, I'm not gonna put them in just yet. Um, so we're gonna get this window regulator out and go from there, guys, so let's go. Alright everybody, it was a mission, but we got the window regulator out along with the window and the window did not break. So that's the good part. Um, we have the uh, regulator right here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is, it looks like it's in good condition. I'm not too, too worried about how it looks. I'm going to go ahead now and go, oh, actually, before I try to install it, I'm going to take a look at this one just to see how it's mounted. Um, just so then I could get uh, some sort of understanding on how this is mounted because um, to be honest it, it it looks like a big puzzle yep it looks like a big puzzle so I'm gonna go ahead and move forward with it and start removing the rest of the stuff I'm still gonna take off like the anchor on the other side and and stuff like that so let's move on and uh, keep going guys so let's go Alright everybody, so we're to the point now where we're mounting up the window regulator. I do have some new zinc uh, plated bolts there that are going to work very well for this just because they're perfect length. Um, as you guys see, everything is mounting up pretty good, uh, but what I do have to do is tighten up a couple things, um, probably open up a couple of these holes. There's one right here that I think I might have to use the titanium bolt for. Um, I'm eventually going to switch all these to titanium bolts, so eventually I might as well just put that on now. Um, but as you guys can see, everything is looking good. You guys did see me open this up a little bit just so then I can have more access and to hold things. Um, there's no real purpose for me opening that up. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I can grab onto things if I need to um, at an awkward angle. So guys, let's jump back into this carbon fiber door and let's throw this thing uh, together and uh, go from there, guys. Let's go. We've made it this far. We attach the window regulator and it's all mounted up. As you guys can see, I can lift this whole thing up without any problem from the window regulator, from the handle, uh, even from the actual rail. Um, this thing is coming out really good. This door is extremely light. I, I can't wait to actually uh, start 
putting it in use and using it to see what difference it makes. I'm sure I'm going to hear a lot. Uh, of the outside noise from that door but we'll see how it goes but moving on we're gonna go now and attach uh, this bumper it's a window bumper we're just gonna attach it right here um, we're gonna go up forward and I don't know if you could see but there's a hole already right there so this goes in through here and attaches just like this on the other side just to stop the window from uh, rolling all the way out so guys let's jump into this and let's get it going To save on the boring parts and, and stuff like that, um, I already removed the window stoppers from this end of uh, the actual uh, door. I removed this one, I removed this one, uh, I already removed this one and put it on um, right over here. Um, so with these two, I don't know if you guys noticed that on this door, the the holes are, are actually where they need to be like they're they're here where they need to be and they're here where they need to be um again because this is carbon fiber and it's everything is is hand laid this is definitely not where they need to be so this one fits because i opened it up but the problem with that is that my bolts are not long enough so what i'm gonna have to do is order some titanium bolts uh i'm gonna have to order bigger ones now so our longer ones rather so i think i'm gonna have to do like 15 millimeter just so then it can get to here so moving on to the second one uh the second one is kind of the same thing i've been i've been drilling and drilling and drilling as you can see um it, it somewhat fits right it, it fits perfectly fine here but again the bolt is too short the resin and as you guys can see the resin and the position of this uh stopper is too far back um, to actually uh, fit in there. So what I'm gonna have to do is move on uh, to the other parts of the door and then go ahead and order some titanium bolts for that and then install those later on. But moving on, we're gonna go ahead and start moving the actual door lock and the whole mechanism here. So hopefully we can get this done and uh, put on nicely. Oh, it looks like we're missing a stopper right here. So we're gonna go ahead and put this stopper on first and start removing um, this uh, door handle along with the lock and everything else and I think that's it I installed this one as you guys see and I had to open up this hole a little bit more just because as you guys can see it's kind of off um, but it works the the actual stopper is here and it's uh, tied in pretty good so that one's on this one's on unfortunately these two didn't fit like I was explaining in the last segment these two just don't fit just because of how the uh, the holes are lined up so i cut out the holes a little wider so then everything can fit and it does fit but the only issue now is that the bolt is too short so i'm gonna go get some more titanium bolts i was looking at my titanium stash over here and i don't have uh, the m8 bolt that i need so i'm gonna order some of those and those are gonna be coming maybe like in two weeks so then i can go ahead and uh install these but we're gonna move forward and start removing the door handle and the locking mechanism and start adding it to this door guys so let's jump into it Alrighty, thanks to Movie Magic, I did remove everything on the uh, passenger side stock door and we are moving it over and have, for the most part, moved it over to the carbon fiber passenger door. So um, I did lock in the lock itself, so these are all in place. I did have to open these up a little bit, um, but what I'm going to start doing is start mocking up all of the uh, pieces where they need to go um, and go from there, guys. So let's get to this and, and get going. right everybody we finally made it to the end um, we're almost done with this door as you can see the majority of things are on we do have the door handle that is working very well everything in there all the mechanisms are working perfectly we have the locks that work perfectly well as you see everything is locked 
and tight. Um, so I did have to use a couple titanium bolts, but eventually we're gonna change all these to titanium, so I'm not too, too worried about that. But this door is looking phenomenal, guys. So we're gonna just move on to removing this piece. This is the very last piece that we need um, to go on the door to make it functional. Um, we do have these little pieces, these little pla plastic screw-in pieces that I will be removing um, with time just because I want to see if I can find some new ones. If I can't, then I will pull these out and reuse these. But these are the ones you have to kind of finesse out of there, and I don't want to rush it for the sake of the video. So I'm going to take my time, and I don't want to bore you guys with that. So that's the only thing left, as you guys can see. Everything else is has been removed from here um we just got to remove this last piece and install it on our carbon fiber door and then we're almost done guys so let's go fully moved uh this piece here that we're going to go now install right here um hopefully this can just fit without having to uh, do any real modifications or even cutting uh the tighter this is the better just so then it can stay nice and tight uh we don't want too much movement there uh, because remember guys this is what helps level the door and keep it locked into place so let's go ahead and uh, install this piece and go from there all right everybody this is going to conclude today's episode um i mean check it out we have two fully put together semi fully put together um Carbon fiber doors for the SW20 Toyota MR2 build that we're doing, guys. So this is super, super exciting just because now I have carbon fiber doors. I have carbon fiber doors, guys. So this is like probably one of the most, uh, I don't know, top on the list of things that I needed to get done. Remember, like, share, subscribe. Make sure you check out the Nasty Addiction uh, merch store, guys. I have tons of t-shirts there and it does help support the channel. So please make sure you check them out again. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other, guys. Peace. All right, everybody. That's going to conclude today's episode. We have two semi-put-together carbon fiber doors. And I say semi put together because i don't have the windows in and these are all the window pieces and lastly all i have to do is put in those little um little plastic pieces that are used to um screw down like the the speaker and screw down the actual uh inner door card and stuff like that so that's it this is why it's a semi a uh, complete door for the most part it is complete i, I don't want to say semi but it is 100 percent complete um as far as it goes uh as far as putting it on i could do that as well the only thing i need to do is put these on and this i don't need the door off to put on so guys again thank you for watching we have two full carbon fiber doors for our toyota mr2 v6 turbo build i am super excited and i'm super happy that we are at this stage guys so remember like share subscribe until next time, guys, take care of yourselves and each other. And make sure you go down to the bottom link and check out the Nasty Addiction merch store, guys. Buy some of those t-shirts. Buy them, buy them, buy them. Um, I'm going to be opening up a website soon, so make sure you buy them on there um, and help support this channel so then I can get the money to buy the website. So, guys, thank you again. Like I said, like, share, subscribe.
Welcome to another episode of Nasty Nation Garage. So we're jumping back to the front end of the assembly. Um, so we're going now to part six. We finally got some things in. We got the uh, titanium bolts for the lower control arm. So we're going to start installing that, guys. So enough talking. Let's just get into this front end. Just because I'm super, super excited to get this front end finished, or at least as close as possible to finish as I can. So guys, let's jump into today's episode and let's go. everybody welcome to another episode of nasty edition garage so we're going to take advantage of this we're jumping back into the front end uh the front end is going to be super Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of nasty edition garage we're jumping back into the front end uh toyota Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Nasty Addiction Garage. We're going to be jumping into the Toyota front end reassembly. Um, we're going to move on to part six now. We did get some tie rods in. Uh, we got a couple miscellaneous things that also came in. So we're going to install everything today that we do have and keep going forward, guys. I can't wait to finish this front end just because it's getting that much closer to looking complete. So guys, let's jump into today's episode and let's go. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Nasty Addiction Garage. Well, welcome back. Uh, we're jumping back into the Toyota front end reassembly. We're moving on to part six at this point. Uh, we're moving along pretty well, pretty nicely. Um, the front end is developing completely, completely different uh, than what, what I had it and, and it's looking better and better every day. Um, as, I, as we put more things on, we're coming to the closure of the front end and we're gonna start moving on to the the interior and we're gonna put on the doors and stuff like that but we still got to finish this so let's move on to today's episode let's go all right if you guys are just tuning in um, our last episode we did put together uh, finally the other carbon fiber door if you guys are not familiar if you guys go back and check out some of my episodes um, I did get some carbon fiber doors in from Ying over in Malaysia I believe uh, these carbon fiber doors are pretty cool um, they are working so far as far as putting things back on uh, and in the OEM spot it did take some work believe me guys this is not just a plug-and-play type of deal um, you know I had to do a lot of dremeling and I had to do a lot of of reconstructing uh, in certain like uh, uh, areas where you need to mount things but it, it wasn't horrible it, you know there's still some things that I got to finish like I got to drill this out here uh, and replace it with a um, M6 rib nut just so that I could do the same thing I did here uh, but guys this is kind of what we did in the last episode so we're gonna move now back to the front end uh, we're moving back to the Toyota uh, front end reassembly now where we're going to install a couple different things that we have uh, that came in so we did get a couple things in we have here our titanium bolts so our titanium bolt that goes right down there so it's gonna fit right in here right through here that's gonna allow us uh, this is the old one by the way look at how disgusting that is huh this is old this is new. Um, I'm not a big fan that it is, hold on, let me focus this thing. I'm not a huge fan that it's silver. Um, it's still titanium, so what I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some of this, uh, this map torch here that I have and uh, probably turn it a different color. Uh, I'm gonna heat it up a little bit and, and do it that way. Um, I do have the black washers, so at least the washers are black, so it'll be either, the, at worst case scenario, burnt titanium and black, which doesn't look horrible. But we can now move forward and install the front control arms. So I'm super excited about that because I do want to install those. Uh, we're going to be doing that today. And uh, we're also going to uh, be installing uh, these beauties right here. So we got the tie rods in. Uh, so we're going to add the tie rods. And everything's going to be mocked up, but we're not going to tighten everything up. Uh, let's see, I got here. I got these that need to be attached to, to the tie rods as well. Um, I also got in the plugs for the headlights. So remember, I needed to do the H4 to the H11. Uh, these are going to be to the to the headlights that I got. Um, so we're going to be plugging one here and we're going to plug one there. We're just going to keep it plugged in so then we know that we have it at least. And then lastly, uh, we're going to uh, put the bellows on for the tie rods after we install those. Okay, guys, so let's jump into the episode and let's go. 
All right, so first things first, we're going to do the tie rods. And uh, I got this really, really cool, uh, neat tool that helps me remove this that I got it from Harbor Freight. And uh, it works beautiful for this. So it's this thing. It's called the inner tie rod removal tool. Um, so basically it has um, a ratchet ending. Um, <laughs> ratchet ending. And you get to change the different clips here. Um, as you see that there's clips here that you can interchange, remove, or slide, um, which are going to be these guys. One second. Which are going to be these guys. So these guys are all different uh, millimeters, so that all depends on what gets in between or what fits in between your tie rod. So we're going to go ahead and use these, and I'm going to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about uh, as far as using it. This, is, this tool makes it way easier to remove any type of tie rod. Uh, as you can see, they have multiple different uh, sizes, so we're going to choose the right size uh, for this tie rod, and we're going to pluck it out. But what we first got to do is go ahead and uh, remove this little um, zip tie and remove this bellow and stuff like that. We're going to pull that out because we got a new one. So uh, I'm going to put you guys on the, the uh, camera stand, and you guys are going to check me out and uh, watch me take this off real quick. All right, I'm going to put you guys on the camera stand just so I can get this done real quick, nice and smooth, and I'll show you guys exactly... Uh, how it's supposed to be done. All right, guys, you've seen uh, what I did. Um, this actually works really well. So the piece that I did use, the size that I did use is, let me see, uh, whatever that is, 1 and 3 sixteenths. So that works perfectly fine over uh, the tie rod joint here. So this is kind of what I did in case you guys didn't, couldn't see. Uh, so I took this piece, it goes right in here, kind of locks into place, as you guys can see. Um, and what happens now is that you take this piece of this tool you kind of fit it right over here so it locks into this groove you go ahead and then lock this kind of mechanism here kind of locks it into place and you start twisting so the end of this has a uh, ratchet piece so that's going to be a lot easier for you to just crank at it and get it out guys so now that you guys seen what i did i'm going to go ahead and do the other side and let's get the other side done so then we can install these new ones let's go All right, you guys seen that was relatively easy to remove. Um, I'm super excited now that we are on to the next step and we're gonna go ahead and now install the uh, new tie rods. We're gonna go ahead and use the same fancy little tool to do that. We're just gonna test uh, what size uh, the collar is of the tie rod. I think it's one of these. I, I'm not too, too sure, but I'm, I'm only guessing these are the wider ones that I do have. So we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, measure these really quickly. Let me, let me take them out of the package, measure them, and then we'll go from there. All right, guys, so for these uh, tie rods, the size is, 
one and three sixteenths. So that actually fits around the collar perfectly well. So just like this, it fits. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these real quick. I'm gonna put you guys on a timeline or time lapse. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to put you guys on a time lapse and uh, have you guys uh, sit back and watch me install these. All right, I'm going to put you guys on a time lapse. Now that we got the correct size of the collar, I'm going to go ahead and install these in their proper positions and we'll move on from there. So let's go. All right, everybody, so we got these uh, bad boys locked in place right now. So as you guys seen, I used that pretty fancy tool. Uh, it worked great. So now what we're going to do now is go ahead and attach the bellows. And the bellows are um, these plastic kind of covers that I got right here. Uh, we're going to attach these guys. Let me open them up for you, and uh, we'll check them out. If you were not sure what the bellows were to the MR2, these are it. These are the rubber pieces that actually um, protect the inner tie rod just so then um, that grease that they put to keep the arm articulating um, smoothly, this kind of protects that. So it, it looks like it came with some uh, zip ties. We're going to go ahead and use these zip ties to install this. Um, this is a really, really, really simple job, guys. So all we're really going to do is go ahead and push this all the way back to that first lip right there um, that allows you to go ahead and zip tie this to that um, and then you go ahead and zip tie this front end to there's a little joint right there there's a little groove I don't know if you could see it that groove there is where you go ahead and zip tie this piece to so we're gonna go ahead and move forward to that um, we have these bolts here um, or these nuts rather these nuts here are to help tighten the uh, other piece that connects to the spindle um, so what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and put these on no specific orientation as far as putting those on but we're gonna have to put those on after we put the the bellows so uh, and once we do that we're gonna go ahead and attach the other arm that attaches to that um, and then we're gonna go ahead and install the uh, lower control arms which I'm super excited about because uh, if you guys didn't see in the last episode uh, we did uh, install some of the uh, pro-urethane bushings that uh, it came out phenomenal so as you guys can see these things look great I'm super excited to install them because uh, I did it so it was, it was great I, I'm not super super excited about the pro urethane I've been having them so I figured that I'd use them um, but I wanted a different type of uh, bushing to, to go inside there but uh, we'll talk about that on another day but we're gonna go ahead and install these just for now just because I do want this car moving so we're gonna go ahead and install both these two pieces and uh, we're gonna go ahead and move forward guys so let's go All right, everybody, what you guys seen me do was uh, install the bellows, the tie rod, and the tie rod ends. Um, so I'm super excited because this looks super, super good. Um, I did do the passenger side as well, and this one is installed. Um, I still got to clip those uh, 
those um, zip ties just so then we can make them nice and flush but we're moving on uh, to the lower control arms now guys so finally we're moving on to the lower control arms I'm finally I mean excited to be at this point um, just because now soon we'll be able to attach the uh, spindles and this whole calipers and all that stuff and then finally put the wheels and at least put the front end down um, as we work our way down towards the middle and then going on to the rear but uh, let's go ahead and move forward and install these lower control arms I do have the titanium bolt so we'll, we will be using titanium I'm gonna see how it looks uh, with the black um, washer I, I'm I'm kind of skeptical. I'm just not a fan of the silver titanium. I'm either a black titanium type of guy or even a burnt titanium. So I don't know. I might uh, use one of those torches I got over there on the side and uh, torch one of these heads to see how burnt titanium looks with uh, a black collar. Not sure yet, guys, but this is the OEM bolt. Uh, this is the uh, new titanium bolt. We're going to go ahead and move forward and install that lower control arm. So let's go. All right, everybody, so we installed the lower control arm. Finally, now it looks good with the titanium. Actually, you know, I was gonna burn that uh, head of that titanium bolt, but I'm actually liking how it looks. And as you guys can see there, it looks, it looks pretty slick. I, I'm totally okay with it, so I think I'm gonna keep it. Uh, but look at how nice this looks. This looks phenomenal. I'm super, super excited on how this all came out. Uh, lastly, all I gotta do is uh, clip these little uh, ties uh, but I'm going to do that off camera. That's that's nothing that needs to be recorded. But guys, look at this. Look at this. This is coming out so, so nice, so well. This is coming out from a long ways. If you guys seen how it was in the beginning, you guys can see how it is now. And it's a total difference. It's coming out phenomenal. Um, we also did do the driver's side as well. And again, it looks phenomenal. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, I'm super excited on the control arms. I'm not going to connect anything else just because uh, we still got a couple things to do. So I'm not going to go all ham and try to uh, tighten everything to spec. But I did tighten the lower control arms to the spec, which are 87 foot-pounds, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Front. Yes, yes. Yeah, 87 foot-pounds. So that's what I... Um, tighten them too so I'm just glad uh, those are on and I at least know that those can uh, handle whatever needs to be done you know I could lightly tighten everything else if I need to but I'm not gonna go that far just yet because we have a lot more to do so guys thank you again for watching this was just a real quick uh, lower control arm install I guess with uh, full front end suspension and an update to our Toyota MR2 front end reassembly <laughs> oh that was a mouthful but uh guys thank you again for uh tuning in and uh, checking out the episode i am super super grateful for every single one of you guys remember like share subscribe make sure you guys go down to the links down below to check out the nasty addiction merch store guys it does help me a ton if you guys buy merch from the store, uh, that money does go to the channel and uh, helps me continue doing things that I love doing in this garage, guys. So, um, so yeah. So, guys, you guys got to go tune in to the next episode. The next episode is going to be just as good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move forward with the rest of the suspension. Uh, but I got a little, a little setup first. I got a question for you guys all, uh, but that's going to have to wait to the next episode, guys. So, again, thank you for watching. Remember, like, share, subscribe. And, again, thank you again to every single one of my subscribers. So, take care of yourselves and each other. Peace.